Hello and welcome to this Nano Machine video. I'm Chris England and I'm going to be presenting using Excel to drive a configurator um, or any, any event up automation at the end of the day. Uh, I recently did a webinar uh, earlier this year on a fish tank configurator that I had built and uh, one of the questions that came up was could you drive it with Excel and the answer in simplicity is yes you can and I thought it would be good to just make a little video to show how um, that may look. Uh, reasons for using Excel to drive a configurator could be anything from getting a, a, a spec sheet off of your website. Perhaps uh, you have an entry form that your clients can fill in on the details of what they're looking for. And then uh, the key parameters come through in Excel format. Um, and we could then pick it up with a configurator and have it populate the data and create drawings if, if we wanted to go that far. Uh, it could be a salesperson on site with a, a spreadsheet that they just sit with the client or customer and populate it. It could be just a simple ERP um, output. So you, you you know somebody gets a job order, puts it into the ERP, and the ERP outputs a list of key parameters for your configurator to pick up. So there's multiple scenarios as to where this could be useful. Uh, so let's jump in and have a look at the changes I've made. So it all starts with a spreadsheet which i've just got a template at this stage um, this is my configurator folder you'll see in my jobs i've only got one job there currently and if i open up my spreadsheet it's quite a simple one it's just the key parameters that i've got here and I can change my project name. So I've got a project name and a job number, the job number in case you might have multiple jobs, perhaps somebody wants to order multiple fish tanks so we can populate more than one job in a project folder. So I'll call this one live and we'll change the number to 3220, 5220, excuse me. And let's go and change some of the parameters here. Uh, so I'll go 1650 and we'll go to a height of 650, a depth of 500 and then on my cupboard I might want to go to 700 in my cupboard height I'm not going to change the panel thicknesses uh, the doors are currently plain so we'll change that to brick I need to be careful that I spell the right rectangular nope. Jeez, I just paused the, the video there while I worked out how to spell rectangular and then realized that it's not rectangular, it's rectangle glass. So I double checked so that it'll be fine. And we can go for three on the doors. I won't change the lid height and the overhang. So if I save that spreadsheet, I can now go into my configurator part. And if I go and open that up, We'll see that the first thing it asks for is a spreadsheet. So this is where I've made the adaption from the, the webinar I did previously, uh, is that it now asks for a spreadsheet. So I say find Excel and I go and find that template. It's okay to use the template in this case because it'll make a copy of the, the spreadsheet to then use in the, the live documentation. So if I then go and create, it'll create my model. So I just wanna quickly jump back to that part, I'll close the form for now and just show you the rule that I've used. So it's quite a simple rule. It's got, at first, it's got a uh, the dialog box content. So that's just to make the dialog bo box pop up and show us, uh, look for Excel documentation. And in this case, an XLSM. And then we've got some fields. So the project Excel is the selected file. So that's where it maps the, the Excel spreadsheet from. Then it goes, and I've just gone with sheet one, I haven't made it any more complex than that. And then it goes and opens the Excel spreadsheet. It goes and grabs the project and the job name parameters from cell B3 and B4, and then simply closes the Excel, and in this case, opens up the next form. So when I get into my actual configurator from there, and I bring up that form that I closed, we can see that none of the parameters are currently uh, set to the to what they should be. So if I just go and say pull parameters from Excel, it then pulls them in and all I need to do is an update to get them to then reflect. So those are the parameters then pulled in and they will now match Excel. 
I've gone for a hybrid approach in this case, so I can still go and change all of these. I suppose you could write back to Excel uh, the changes that you've made here in the configurator yourself um, to then push back if that fits the workflow. Uh, and from there, yeah, it's gone and pulled in everything. I'm quite happy with the, the tank from here. So basically to this point, I've not touched much other than running the manual rules, which could all be triggered automatically. Uh, so this could be a hands-off configurator if if we wanted it to be at this stage. I could just populate my Excel spreadsheet, save it in a location, and let a, a job processor, for example, go and do all the work. I will then go and create a overall drawing for those of you that haven't seen the automation webinar that we did earlier the year, um, just to show you the rest of the functionality of this configurator. So from here, I've now got a, a general arrangement drawing of my overall tank, um, and it comes with a parts list with all of the cutting data filled out there for me. Uh, I would then need to go in detail. I haven't added any dimensions to the actual overall model. That could be done, it is possible, uh, but I haven't done it at this stage. So saving that and closing it, let's just have a quick look at the folder again to make sure that... So there's my live folder and the 5220, uh, 5 I shouldn't be such a hard number. And there we go, we have our spreadsheet that's then been saved, which will then be a log of the data that's within this uh, configurator. And in each folder, I then have parts. You can see that on this, I don't have all the parts, and now I can, uh, all the drawings for the parts. So I can then go and create component drawings, which will then go and start populating uh, all those folders, all the part folders with drawings to accompany them. And you'll see that some of these are dimensioned, not all of them. Uh, but they have base dimensions for panels. It's not a lot that you need a width, height, and a thickness generally has it covered, but just as an example here. So it'll also go and create some, the rule that I'm running now will go and create all the individual uh, sub-assembly drawings. So we'll get a, a GL of each sub-assembly. So the one of the cupboard at the bottom, the actual tank and the lid uh, arrangement. And then it'll go and also break down those into the individual parts. So it's gone and run. Let's go have a look so you can see all the drawings are now populated and saved in those folders. Um, and there's you know quite a few more. If I just go back, we'll see in the lid folder and the parts, we've got those. And in the assembly folder, there'll be one drawing for the, the lid as well. So of course, bringing Excel in as an entry um, to a configurator is great, but we can also go out. So if I go and create a bomb, in this case, it's the simple bomb feature. So it's, it's the same as creating a uh, bomb by clicking on the bill of materials button, uh, but we can have this custom. So the reason to that we may want a custom uh, arrangement is perhaps for uh, direct data, data entry back into our ERP or for parts list generation for into another system, uh, an MRP or whatever it is that you then need to feed or procurement software that you need to feed this information back in. And if you do get into that scenario, it almost certainly won't uh, want it in this format. So we'd need to then uh, put it in a specific format that can be read by that ERP or whatever system we're trying to feed into. Um, so that's why we would possibly go to the other, uh, writing out a custom spreadsheet in this case. Um, that's just the simple bomb. So I've just triggered the bill of materials button, which, uh, isn't too fancy at this point, but nonetheless, that is my configurator and being driven by Excel in this in this scenario. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you do have any questions or uh, want us to um, investigate doing something like this for your business, uh, please reach out to us. Thank you very much. Have a good day.